this is live. On it. Right, rolling, stable, yours. Cool. Okay, so if you could start by telling us, um, like, describe your sound in like three words for somebody who's never heard of your music before. Uh, I would say uh, reggae, dancehall, metal. Cool. And is yeah, it, very good. It's a bit of a combination that is it's not common at all. Um, how did the infusion come about in the first place? I mean, uh, I think growing up we're all fans of different kinds of music and I think I've got four different people from all different backgrounds but there was like a common ground with bands like The Clash, The Ruts, The Police, you know, rebel, rebel music I guess and that was the thing that we all had in common. Obviously we all like different kinds of things but that was the main thing I think we had in common was bands that mixed different styles but, you know, it was the reggae with the punk. It was mainly that was the thing that really started, I think, and then we've sort of brought in the metal aspect and the rock. Yeah, I think it was like, um, we like to think of it as like those bands that were doing it there with like the kind of the ska and the rock steady of the time, like the second wave ska stuff, um, mixing it with like punk and stuff. It's kind of like a more modernised version of that. Yeah, we'd like so, to think if The Clash were around now, they're, they're like the daddies. Like yeah, they're like the daddies of it, really. And Kill the Power is your fifth album. Yeah. Tell us a bit about the inspiration behind that. Have you grown or have you gone back to basics? A bit of both, I think. Like, there's, I, mean, I think it's like refining. You know, um, on, on this record, there's uh, we've kind of maybe gone back to certain things on the first record, which was more an emphasis on the dance hall element of kind of what we did, um, sort of quite aggressive kind of dance hall, and then. Um, but then kind of really working on the songs. Because I think stylistically a lot of people have always associated us with a sound, but not necessarily a song. So on this one, the emphasis was certainly on the songwriting. I don't really feel like this is the next Skin Red record. I, I personally feel like it's like, like the definitive one, really. You know, I mean, it's quite a bold statement, but I think that's the way, the way we're all feeling at the moment. We feel like a, there's been like a new lease of life from the band. I think when we started writing the record, we were listening to our, our our own records for like influence, going what worked in the early days, you know, and trying to revisit that, but with you know the knowledge of you know, like 10, 12 years of, of touring, writing new albums and stuff, and it's you know it's nice that we can learn from what we've already done. Because there's things that you could sort of pinpoint from all the other records, you know, there was something like on um, Union Black where we started to really mess about with more electronic stuff. There was always that element in the band but you know we'd kind of had uh, this and having another guy with us live so that we could do all that stuff as well so more using it as a songwriting tool this time so you know we sort of had that aspect to the band as well but this is more I feel like um, our second record this is what we wanted our second record to be you know this is um, I think it's an album from start to finish that's yeah. the thing a lot of the times we'd write songs and have a it goes down sometimes there's some filler tracks you don't think they're filler at the time but you sort of you know they're they haven't reached their full potential I think this time we get every song the same attention and it won't, we weren't trying to write 12 singles you know we wanted to write an album that you could stick on from start to finish and go on the journey and we I don't think we'd really thought about that before we were really conscious of doing an album yeah it was more like um records that we grew up listening to sort of thing so for us I keep on saying to people that it's like for me when I was like 12 and I heard Blood Sugar Sex Magic by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, like every single one of those songs is that band, but there's like really sort of introverted, beautiful acoustic songs on it. And then there's all out kind of like funk jams and stuff and things. And this is, that's to them, you know, that, that's kind of their spectrum. And I feel like we've sort of visited every sort of color of this band, you know, on this record. Excellent. Now I listened to a few of the tracks off the new album. And I kind of got like the feeling it's like gaming music. Like I could just see it on like Street Fighter or GTA people have said or that before. Have yeah, you heard that before? And would you consider I th doing it? I th we have done it. Like on the first record, like uh, nobody was on like a racing game for what was it Play Xbox or PlayStation something like that. And then Pressure was on was the giveaway track on the Xbox when you bought them. So I mean, yeah. I don't know what it is about the music that makes it, you know. I think it's probably like that excitement level. Yeah, it's I think like the dynamics. Of, I think you know yeah. it doesn't. It, but I think because when you're gaming, time passes very, very. It, it, you could be on there for ten yeah. hours, and, and it feels it feels quick. And I think with our songs, they don't sit in one. 
doesn't sit, you know, it's not pigeonholed to one style, one specific song, so it keeps changing, makes it, you know, makes it feel quick, I guess. Something always happening. Cool. And the um, Kill the Power video, tell us about making it look like. One second. Can you put one down something to pass people a tip tap there on the bus for the boss? Because it feels important. Is it? Yeah, great. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, just tell us about uh, making the video. Um, it looked like a lot of fun, and how small was that car? It was tiny. tiny, yeah. Like when we were tiny. all sat in the back, and I was like, Arias. I got the front seat, yeah. I'm the smallest. Smaller, yeah, I was just like, oh my God. So like Because I was the last one to get in the car as well, and Ben was in the middle. I was just like, this is not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, it worked great for me. Yeah. You know? It's like they said, you're going to go first. But the, I mean, the whole video came about. We were obviously looking to do Kill the Power video, and originally we were going to do it here in the UK, like we've done all our other videos. And we had a gig in India, and I think someone had the bright idea of going, well, why don't we just do the video there? Which seemed like a very, you know, cool idea. We didn't, you know, I think we got on the plane, and the day before we got on the plane, you're doing a video. Get off the plane. Yeah. You know, you're getting in cars, going round India, stuff. paying off the police, paying off gangs, <laughs> like riding, on hiding the, in the ghetto, riding on the back of motorbikes and stuff. That was. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was a real guerrilla style video. I mean, we didn't know what was going to happen we, when we got there. There was no call sheet, no day sheet. It wasn't. You're going to be here at this time. It was just you get in the cars and we film where we can, so we don't get caught. There's a lot of footage yeah. actually that didn't even get used. We were on top of this building. You know, other stuff with Benj going through kind of like this sort of I don't know. Where it, there was I a lot of interaction like, with yeah. him as well yeah. with um, with like the kids and the people that were in. Because he he'd do one take down the street. Everything on the video was one take. It'd be like right, get the take, go, move, get the take, go. There was no like. And that, for him, I guess it must have been quite difficult trying to learn his. Yeah, sort of vibe, and, and he was at one stage. The police showed up because we had people there looking for the police and stuff. Because if they show up, you just got to pay them, you know. So, but um, they they showed up, and he had to run, and he jumped in the back <laughs> of the car, and they threw all these these coats on top of him because they like when you're when you're in India as a white person, they treat me totally different. You know, mm. they treat me a certain way. People had never seen someone that looks like Benji. People had never seen uh, like this guy with big the dreads. the way he was like, dressing as well, yeah, like, acting, you know. I, they'd never seen someone like that. They were just like, oh, it was just to see people's faces. And you you had know, it was mic together as well. Yeah, <laughs> oh, Mike's got a big ginger beard, like a huge ginger beard. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah, it's funny. I mean, with the video, it, it, it was so much fun. I think it suited the song, and you know, and there's this one point I think Ben just walking down down this sort of ghetto, tiny little street like this, and you see him sort of looking round, and he's actually, he's looking for the police, looking to see if he's gonna get caught, because he had to, if they, ha if the police found out, you know, we'd be in real trouble, lots of money. So he's always very aware of it, which is, it's pretty nuts, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. And what sort of um, reaction and feedback have you had to the new stuff that's coming out already? Two thumbs up. Yeah, it's been really more positive. Thumbs, you get more thumbs up. Yeah, it's been really, really positive. I mean, people that are kind of um, that have known the band forever, they sort of feel like, yeah, it's pretty much the definitive. That's the thing, because like in the press, we've always been described as like a wicked live band, which is which is awesome because that's what we do. We are a live band, and it's you know for for us, we've always wanted to make an album that you know people can say it's as good as the live show, or do you know what even overtake the live show? I want the album to be the thing why people come to see us live. Yeah, you know that's the reason I want them to be able to sing the songs and. And that's been a long journey to try and get there as well because, you know. Because I think for a little while it's almost like the, the live show did kind of take over because we try and live, we, you know, we kind of have like this sound system kind of element, you know, so we're playing and you don't know what it, it could be like rewinds and stuff. We could play the song again but totally different. And yeah, and the set like list that. changes and it's, yeah. I think now with this record it's like the music industry at the moment is most bands get to do maybe one album or two albums. They come out and they have, they're the biggest thing and then don't really hear about and we've been lucky that we we're five albums in it and hasn't we've come out yet but yeah. I feel like Metallica you know hit their high spot of five albums bands like AFI would hit yeah. their peaks mm -hmm. you know four or five records in it's not you know that's why I feel like we're a new band still I still think we can achieve more than what we have you know so okay. and getting to like this time of year of Christmas coming up and stuff looking back what's been your proudest moments for you guys so far um, this year or in general, in general. Like your whole career really just uh, I, th I feel like st uh, st staying together for so mm. long 
and and being able to I f I feel like like I was kind of saying about bands you know you kind of they, they lose sort of hunger or whatever and they don't really want to do it anymore but I feel like we've we all like every record we bring out is better than the last. Yeah, one, I'm starving. You know, so <laughs> starving. So, so I th I think that whole thing like keeping it together because it's like family. You know, mm. these guys are my family. I don't have my folks. You know, and I've been in this band since I was and had I've been in it my entire adult life. You know, so uh, that's yeah. the thing, isn't it? Is that it's been this. I've been doing that. It's been this long, steady growth, but it's always got better. Even if it's like a little thing, even if it's you're, you've gone back to a, a you know place in Germany, the venue's been upgraded, or you've sold it out, it's just been better. It's never got worse, and I think that's the thing that keeps us slow climb, yeah. slow climb, and going. Okay, you know this is what we do. I don't know what it's like to go out there. I like the journey, seeing what it you know what it might be like. I continue to keep having goals and building up, so I just feel thankful for that. And you know, every year gets better, which is a real blessing. And staying with the Christmas theme, what's on your Christmas list? New Xbox, new PlayStation, iPad, Sony Care, new house, brush. car, <laughs> <laughs> world peace. Yeah, maybe a nice dinner. Pretty normal, then. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe a nice dinner round round the family's house. Christmas is a. Uh, Always like a big deal at my folks' house, so it's just nice to hang out with them. Really, yeah, see we, your mates. So, so much of the year is like we're away touring and stuff. So, like when it comes to Christmas, it's just really nice to see everybody, you know. And I've um, all told them I want a new Xbox, a new PlayStation, <laughs> new car, new house. So green Mega Man, yellow Mega Man, white yeah. Mega Man. Wicked. Yeah. And do you have a Christmas jumper? If so. When do you start? Do you wear it in the lead up to Christmas, or do you save it? Oh, you Christmas blatantly day? do, don't you? I've got you Christmas blatantly, jumper, yeah, yeah. I I like. Yeah, sure thing. <laughs> like, I wear it um, probably Christmas week. I start breaking it out. What does it look like? It's got uh, it's got like farmyard animals on it and some Christmassy stuff. It's got some pigs and some ducks, sort of geometric shapes on it. I want so. the Die Hard Christmas jumper. Have you seen that? It says ho ho ho. Now I have a machine gun. And on the back, it's got like, I don't know if anyone's familiar with Die Hard. Yeah, it's got like the gun taped at the back, so it's like, you know, so he can reach his back, gets his gun. It looks very cool. I'd like that. Cool. Yeah. Or a Slayer Christmas jumper. I've seen those as well. So. That's a good one. And what about New Year's? What are your plans? You guys party animals or? Massive party animals, yeah. yeah. Where's that cup of tea? I think I'm going to try and go see The Prodigy. You going to uh, do it? Pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah rudimental, yeah, yeah. That'd be great. So then, what are your hangover tips? Because it sounds like you guys might have a hangover the next day. I'd, um, I'm I'd rubbish with hangovers. <laughs> <so. laughs> I've got my method down, like what I do. Coconut water mm. is key. And then uh, and I get, as soon as I wake up and I feel sick, I get in the shower and I shower and I get all clean and sorted out and then I go back to bed and then I drink those coconut You've always wine. done that, yeah. yeah. See, I, I sort of feel sorry for myself and sort of make everyone else around me suffer and like they don't understand, you know, I'm ill, you don't understand. And so I think if I've got to get up and actually do something, that's the best cure, like actually just getting on with it, mm -hmm. you know. I think banana's supposed to be really good, or yeah. milk thistle. Pot potassium. Milk thistle's yeah. very good for your yeah. organs, yeah. That, if you take some of that. Regenerates. Yeah. There you go, get some of those. And then looking back on the year, what's been your album of the year and who's your favourite artist then? Oh, that's a good question. We've got like really weird music taste, so I don't know. Like, um, I'm trying to think what. what oh, uh, I've been listening to his album this year. I really like this. There's this Syrian artist called Omar Soliman, right? And he's, and he's, it's like this, uh, it's called like Electro Dabki music. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like almost like. Syrian wedding music, but it's really full on, like really intense. And um, I reckon, well, it's that his album Wenu Wenu. Like, I think that's gonna be, that's probably my favorite album <laughs> this year. But for, uh, Forte, this uh, warp artist, did a, a bunch of the music on it as well. So it's really good. I think it's good anyway. I think I'll do one for the Metalheads then. I thought I thought uh, the best album this year that brought. You know, was I think it was probably the Bring Me record, Bring Me the Rise oh, record. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was just it broke down a lot of boundaries. I think I think a lot of guys wearing the old denim le denim and leather dudes were starting to get into it. They had the young kids, they had the dance heads. I think it was a real expansive album for them. You know, hearing Bring Me the Rise on Radio One is pretty nuts. So I, I think for rock and metal, I think that was definitely the breakthrough album. So 
And last question, like, are you film heads? Do you like to go to cinema? And what's been your favourite film of the year? I went to cinema the other day. I saw The Hunger Games too, which was all right. All right, it was. I don't, have you seen the first one? Yeah, yeah. See, I enjoyed the first one. I thought it was good, but the second one, it was. It left me going. Oh, okay. Okay, not bad. I I I really enjoyed the Alan Partridge movie because yeah, just that. growing up, yeah. like watching Alan Partridge, and then that that movie. Yeah, I I loved it. I watched it. that on the plane. Did you watch that on the plane as well? Uh, I start. I watched you watch it on the plane because <laughs> I was behind you. <laughs> I was laughing out loud. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Oh, nice one. That's it. Awesome. Oh, I don't. Oh. Oh yeah, if you could do an idea before our show called Entertainment Now, so just introduce yourself and say you're watching Entertainment. Or just say that we are skin dread and you're watching. Introduce yourself individually if you like, if you want to, it's entirely how you want to do it. Sure. Uh, uh, Entertainment Now. You're watching Entertainment Now, yeah. Hi, Hi, this is Dan from Skin Dread. This is Aria. And you're watching Entertainment Now. Awesome. Nice, thank you.